Hi, this is Peter. Hi, this is Sandra. And we are Medievalist.net. And today we're going to be talking to you about... Oh, Game of Thrones. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, a couple things is, uh, today's episode actually was, for both of us I would say, a little bit overwhelming. Would you agree? I think we've seen every character in the show uh, show up here, so... Almost uh, every character. Almost every, yes. That's not quite... They I can't. think they just touched on way too many storylines in this episode. And, you know, because they decided to hit almost every storyline, um, what ended up happening is it was almost like brief, very brief snippets, and it just felt sort of yeah, like jarring. If you if you do a scene where the character shows up for the whole show, it's like 30 to 40 seconds, um, it, it loses a lot of emotional impact. Like, to me, that whole scene, for example, I thought was sort of a throwaway, was the Arya saying bye to Hot Pie. Like, they spend an excessive amount of time having him give her a badly misshapen piece of bread that's supposed to be a wolf, yet... You know, I felt that they could have spent more time I'm, on Theon. I'm going to miss Hot Pie. I don't... Or they could have spent more time, you know, north of the wall or just, there were just some scenes where... It's like... I, I, uh, I found this week's episode just kind of... I, you know, it's... What, there were better things to focus on. Like, I, re like I did enjoy... A, um, Jamie and Brienne of Tarth. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Oh, okay. Well, you know, like first of all, like, and we, you know, we talked about this before, but how this is a kind of a show that's hard to you know look at one particular episode because you really have it's a really long story mm -hmm. arc of of what's happening, and it really takes a full season to get through a story of a particular character. Mm -hmm. um, I I really actually I quite enjoyed the. Uh, Jamie and Brienne kind of storyline. Like I was kind of surprised that they start off being captured, and I was really surprised what happens to Jamie at the end. Yeah, um, yeah, and it was kind of interesting because you know as much as Jamie hates being captive to Brienne, I think they've kind of got some Stockholm syndrome going there, <laughs> where he kind of um, is starting to um, like her. Yeah, he, and. He, he might not be, like, they're not best friends or anything, but you notice certainly when they're captured, I mean, if he didn't care about her, he wouldn't say, listen, you got to not resist. You got to do everything you can. So when they're raping you, it's it's over and done with quickly. If he didn't care about her, he wouldn't tell her, like, how to manipulate her way out of a bad situation. And then, what did you make of him trying to fool yeah, his that, captors? Well, like, that's lie he says to protect Brienne. Mm -hmm, about and, her yeah, father the, being the, yeah. you know, offering all her the sapphires, yeah. sapphires yeah. and stuff. And, and uh, yeah, so, like, he, uh, and he seems to does a good job, but then I, I guess he overplays his hands and being smart. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really crappy pun you put there. That Sorry, was, everyone. Really, is that intentional? No. Anyway, not with me. <laughs> but right, so he he it works for the Brienne thing, but I wonder where you think he kind of it went wrong and got him in trouble because it worked in in terms of stopping Brienne's rape. But then he kept talking and um, trying to convince the guy. You know, oh, that like, like he. Yeah. This is a, like I believe this is like the second time he's gonna try to convince them of the money and stuff like that. And well, he doesn't. He's not really can be. He he could easily he, give him money. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. They, yeah. But first time they rejected it. Like I can see why they would be willing, cause uh, you know, to you know, save Brienne for the money, cause she they don't she means nothing from otherwise. But like. With them, it's like uh, Jamie. Uh, you know, it, it's they would lose everything if they lost Jamie. So, but I'm surprised he you know cut off his hand. I guess there's like some some bitterness towards Lannisters yeah, here. You think? <laughs> yeah, a little bit on the bitter bus there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, and an another thing I uh, thought was rather interesting was them relegating Tyrion to the um, coin master or whatever, mm. um, and Littlefinger in that little whole meeting with the chairs and the dragging the chairs oh, around. Oh, that was and very funny. That it was. was uh, yeah. It was interesting because now Tyrion, although he's sort of been relegated to this uh, position out of it's not it's not that it's not important but he's not doing military stuff well he's not happy about it which no. which, which I find like odd being you know like this like he certainly was have you ever done accounting okay enough said okay but just saying <laughs> hey if I if I had control of the money I'd be be very but happy to be an accountant if I had all the money and stuff he realizes how much Littlefinger's like been screwing mm -hmm. the crown over by putting them in debt to the tune of tens of millions of dollars yeah. and that it, if they don't pay it back, these guys are going to back their enemies and they're completely <laughs> screwed. It, it's it, brutal. It's good to see that Westeros also has its uh, debt problems just like every other country right. in, in the world. So Just like the EU, Westeros <laughs> is got, you know, yeah. Lannisters are like, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get political, but <laughs> start naming places and stuff. But yeah. uh, it's just, it's pretty brutal. And uh, I also wanted to touch on another interesting conversation. A um, couple of them. Danny, um, how she decides to offer up one of her dragons for 8,000 unsullied <laughs> warriors. Uh -huh. Like, I, I I, don't believe that she's going to give up the dragon. Like, I think, like, oh, yeah, I've got the troops, and uh, I'll just uh, ask for that dragon to come back to me, and it flies back. I, um... That's, that's... I'm gonna, just not going to say anything, but, uh... <laughs> you read that book, okay. And the one after, and the one after that. Moving right along. Um, but what I think is interesting is I really enjoy how the guys, like, that... Slap thinks she can show us her tits and like the translators like and he likes ice cream yeah. you know like <laughs> she's translating trying yeah. to he's saying the most offensive things on the face of the planet and the translator's sitting there going and he will sell you three cloaks <laughs> meanwhile he's yeah, like yeah, saying yeah. something atrocious that, and he's just that, i found that so funny they did that last week and they did it yeah, again I, this I, week. i'm gonna miss that guy <laughs> thing you know it's like <laughs> That was one of the best moments of the show. And yes. he's just like calling her all kinds of names, like a slag and this and that. And uh, and then Danny is like, oh, and I'll take your translator too. <laughs> I'm like, man, if you only asked her what it was really said, it would be interesting. And then you have this kind of cool conversation between Sir Barristan and Sir Jora about... Well, they're trying to advise her against right. it. Right. And, and how one's like, well, I think it's a good decision if she buys these unsullied warriors. Um, and Sir Barristan being a very honorable older knight is like, yeah, but, you know, uh, you can't buy loyalty. So I thought that was an interesting conversation, too. Well, in the end, I like, you know, Daenerys just, hey... You guys are my best advisors, but if you say anything in front in, about against me in front of uh, anyone else, you will. Although she was like, she didn't uh, threaten to kill him. It's like you're not gonna, you'll have new jobs. You won't be working for me. There yeah. are a lot of other like more, you know, things are still going on north of the wall. We didn't get any brand storyline this week, um, mm -hmm. which I was didn't miss. I mean, we're getting st stuff about Rob. Um, that whole funeral thing was way too drawn out with the arrows. Yeah. In the beginning, the guy missing like 82 times. They introduced uh, Caitlin, Catelyn's, um, Catelyn's uncle. uncle. Blackfish. Yeah, you know, like, you know, he's another typical, like, we see him for like one scene and then it has this heart to heart, you know, where I'm supposed to be like, you know, into this character. Right. Eh, you know, it's just, it, just another guy a ton of with, family, with family issues. And uh, 
you know, Rob's figured out that most of his men are blundering and doing things that they aren't supposed to do. He's like, I thought I told you to do X mm -hmm. and you went and you did Y. So he's not having mm -hmm. um, much luck in any department. But all in all, I thought, you know, it was another um, round of character build. Uh -huh. And uh, not, not, not a lot of uh, crazy action or just a lot of yeah. talk and intrigue. You know, but but not as good. Like I, I thought I preferred last week's episode, mm -hmm. truth be told. Like I just thought there was way too much going on again. Um, you know, with me, I thought there were it's just a lot of scenes. Some scenes worked, others didn't. It's not it was it's not an episode. It's just a, a compilation of scenes, you know, which you know, and maybe, you know, look, that's how the show is kind of evolving, right? You, I just you wish know. they could have packed some of those scenes like Theon's escape. And I would have loved to see more about that than that conversation with Hot Pie. Like, well, do you know what I mean? Like, Theon, like, escaped with his life well, and he's being pursued and this. And then some guy saves him at the, the last second and, and then well, that's what? it. I kind of would have liked that. If they're going to, you know, and take out that whole conversation with Blackfish and stuff. And... Yeah. and I don't know, I just, I think some things could have been left on the cutting room floor or packed into a different episode mm -hmm. rather than just, like, it was, like, knee-jerk, like, we're here, and we're here, and we're here. It was, like, flashback, flashback. Wow. Well, or not flashback, but you know what I'm saying. The other way they could, they could run these ep episodes and, like, they do, like, you know, three where, you know, we had Theon, we had Theon see Theon for, like, 20 minutes. Because that's what we've seen him so far, like, this whole first three episodes is we've seen maybe about 10 minutes of Theon. Less. Been, you know, you could, you know, I don't know how, if they, they thought of, you know, putting like another way of doing it is to show all the kind of Theon stuff, you know, um, together, right? That at least we can see it. Or and at then, least like and then they five minutes at a time. Well, it the, feels like 30 seconds on, then you're a herky-jerky into the next character and it's jarring. It would be it'd be interesting to have it like the show concentrate on three characters at a time. I don't know about three, but even like four or five would be better than ten, which was just, it just gets ridiculous. Yeah. But anyway, that that's our take this week. Yeah. It was um, not one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, I, I was, it's you know, mixed. You mixed. Know. I really liked the one last week much better. But next week we'll be back again to uh, review another hopefully more exciting episode of... Game of Thrones. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night.